water in its solid phase, more commonly known as ice, transforms the world into realm of wonder and resilience. From the polar regions, where frozen landscapes stretch to the horizon sculpted by forces older than time itself, to the high mountains, draping the rugged peaks and filling the deep valleys, ice shapes the very bones of the earth, carving vast landscapes over millennia. It blankets seas, lakes and rivers in winter, turning once fluid waters into solid, glistening expanses and preserves ancient climates in its frozen depths. Ice, in all its forms, is a testament to the enduring and transformative power of water, a silent, glittering reminder of nature's delicate balance of strength and fragility. While still in its liquid phase, the water molecules are in constant motion. But as the atmospheric temperature starts to drop, water begins to cool down. This means that the water molecules start losing their kinetic energy and their movement slows down. When the temperature reaches below zero degrees Celsius, an intricate transformation starts to take place. The water molecules have now become stationary, retaining only some of their energy, which still causes them to vibrate. This lack of movement now allows for formation of hydrogen bonds between neighboring molecules, resulting in a network of interconnected hydrogen-bonded crystalline structure, also known as a hexagonal lattice structure. These hydrogen bonds are more stable and longer lasting compared to the liquid phase. The structure forms naturally because it allows for the most efficient and stable bonding network, minimizing overall energy while maximizing the number of hydrogen bonds. The transformation from water to ice is not immediate. The molecules do not suddenly switch from high energy and chaotic motion to a rigid formation. It is a gradual process where the intensity of their kinetic energy slowly diminishes, giving way to the stability of the hydrogen bonds. The process continues until an equilibrium is reached between the kinetic energy of the molecules, which wants to keep them apart, and the hydrogen bonds, which wants to keep them in a specific formation. This point of equilibrium occurs at zero degrees Celsius. At this temperature, the amount of water and ice can stay constant as long as no heat is introduced or removed. Thermal equilibrium is therefore known as both the freezing and the melting point of water. Although we cannot see the water molecules, we are able to detect the intricate patterns that are formed when water freezes, often called frost patterns or ice crystals. These are the result of a phenomenon called dendritic growth. As the ice and the hexagonal lattice structure expands, it doesn't form in a smooth uniform way. Instead, it grows outwards from specific points, forming branching patterns. The branches grow because the tips of the structure is where the freezing happens fastest, allowing the crystal to expand outwards. Because the hexagonal structure of the molecules is an open arrangement with large amounts of empty space between the water molecules, it is less dense than its liquid state. In other words, unlike many other substances, water becomes lighter as it transforms from a liquid to a solid. Typically, only 10% of an iceberg is visible above water, with its vast submerged mass weighing millions of tons hidden beneath the surface. These mammoths of the Arctic regions stay afloat all because of the hexagonal lattice arrangement of ice. The rigid, orderly structure of ice also makes it brittle. The strength of the hydrogen bonds and the lattice arrangement means that ice can fracture along certain planes when subjected to stress, rather than deforming like many other solids. Snow is also another solid form of water, but differs from ice in its physical characteristics. To understand the difference, we must first look at how snow is formed. Whereas ice is formed when liquid water freezes, snow starts its journey in a gaseous state, as water vapor in our atmosphere. When temperature in the clouds drops below freezing, the water vapor turns directly into solid ice crystals, bypassing its liquid phase altogether. Because the water molecules are more spread out in a gaseous state than in a liquid state, when water vapor freezes, the resulting structure is much more open than ice. The branching, delicate ice crystals trap air, which makes snow less dense, light and fluffy. This also explains why snow can be compressed into denser forms, like snowballs. 
The freezing of water vapor also leads to more dominant dendritic growth than in solid ice, which we can detect when looking at a snowflake under a microscope. Each individual ice crystal is made up of millions of water molecules that align themselves in hexagonal lattices. When more water vapor freezes onto the crystal, the result is typically a six-sided snowflake structure. Snowflakes are highly sensitive to variations in temperature and humidity, which plays a significant role in its dendritic growth. As a snowflake falls through the atmosphere, it encounters varying levels of moisture and temperature, each with a slightly different microclimate. This results in subtle variations in the branching patterns, meaning that no two snowflakes are exactly alike. This also leads to us experiencing many different types of snow, from light and powdery to heavy and wet snow. In fact, some native Inuit dialects have over 50 different words to describe different types of snow. But once winter starts to loosen its frosty grip, the intricate lattice of ice crystals starts to collapse beneath the sun's growing strength, a transformation both subtle and profound, a quiet reminder of nature's endless cycles. Which brings us to our next chapter, where we will study the characteristics of water in its most common phase, liquid.